Hey Rob, this is Michelle from Insta360 Marketing Team. We watched and loved your review of the Hero 7. We made Insta360 One X. It shoots 5.7K video, 100 frames per second slow motion, flow state, gimbal-like stabilization, and its unique editing features prove that 360 cameras aren't just about shooting 360. They're a tool for expanding what's possible with a camera. Would you be interested in doing a showdown video that compares the Hero 7 and the One X and tests the stabilization features against each other? Let me know and I'd be happy to discuss getting you all the gear to make it happen. Reply, hey Michelle, sounds great, would love to. Thanks, Rob. So here it is, Insta360 One X. I had the old one, this is a much, much better shape. It uh, just feels more ergonomic to hold. It's got two lenses, one on the back, one on the front, uh, a couple of buttons and a little screen, which is really, really helpful for finding out what mode you're in. But Insta wanted me to compare it to the GoPro, the Hero 7. Now the Hero 7 is like the industry standard for action cam. It's what everyone is using. Well, pretty much everyone. It's a um, really rugged, tried and tested little camera and mine goes on the bottom Alan McTrail Rider mount. With that, you get some really, really nice shots because you're always facing the direction. It's, it's kind of like a great POV view and whatever I turn and face, that's what gets shot. Now I wanted to test this and try Insta360's claim that the stabilization is as good as the GoPro. So what we'll do is we'll compare these videos, we'll get a deep look into them and see what's the best. So I've gone to the Surrey Hills and I've tested it with the GoPro and we'll watch that GoPro footage right now. So as you can see, it's classic GoPro. The stabilization on the Hero 7 is really, really good. The color clarity with some small color grading that I've applied here, and the overall detail in the image and the stabilization is really, really good. We'll get onto the sound and compare the sound of both in a moment, because there's some differences. But this is the classic GoPro 7 stabilized with hyper smooth footage that you're seeing in all the Hero 7 shots that are all over the internet. Looks pretty good, right? Now, let's put the Insta360 camera on. Now, just a little bit about resolution. This is a 5.7K camera. That 5.7 is the full 360 resolution. So when you start cropping it down, when you get your 16 to nine frame, you are not getting anything like 5.7K. It's not even 4K because you imagine you are capturing a portion of that 360 view. So I don't know what the full resolution of a 16 to nine frame is. It's probably a, just about 1080p, just if that. But um, take a look at the difference in the quality and then take a look at the difference in the stabilization. Now the stabilization is pretty good. I can see a couple of glitches in the trees. Can you see that, where the trees are not quite meeting up? Now, I wonder if it's where, I don't know, it's trying to stitch the lenses together and it's kind of getting it wrong in the trees. But other than that, the stabilization is really, really good. Is it better than the GoPro? I don't know, I'm not, I'm not quite sure. It's, um, it's certainly good. It certainly removes any need for a gimbal. 
I like the look of it. I like the look of when you're going around the corners and the look of the kind of bike swinging out. And um, I really like that look. It, it works. It works really, really well. It's not like you're going to need anything else in terms of stabilizing in post production or a gimbal to get this footage looking really good. Now, now the detail, the GoPro wins on detail. I'm sorry, but it is far more detailed, has better color clarity, has a better resolution. You probably might not notice much of a difference. Now, most of my uh, videos are viewed on mobile devices. In fact, that's probably uh, just right for most of YouTube consumption is done on mobile. Then it's uh, tablet, then it's computer, then last of all is TV. So this being viewed on this is, is actually perfectly good enough. So you get a really good image to view it on a mobile and probably a tablet. But as you start getting into a bigger screen, a laptop or a big PC screen or Mac or 4K TV, that that's when you notice the benefits of the GoPro 4K over the cropped 5.7K that you get on the Insta360. So GoPro wins on the, on the image quality. Stabilization, I'm really sorry Insta, but I've probably got to give it to the GoPro wins. Something happened with this footage here and the way that the kind of trees are not quite lining up and for this test only, the GoPro wins. But there are instances where this is so stable and you just couldn't get that shot with a GoPro that will come on to in a moment. There you go, the stabilization is really good, but the GoPro is also really awesome. I would not use this to replace the GoPro, but I am using it all the time to get some of these incredible shots that you see right here. Now, Andy, my friend and I, have been testing the 360 camera um, on one of these. It's called a wire light. What it is is a trolley on a wire and you hang your camera on the bottom and we tried it with an SLR camera, we tried it with a GoPro and a small compact camera and it kind of worked okay but the issue is that you're fixed in one direction all of the time. So as I was riding I just kept disappearing out of the shot and you can't move the camera around and reframe it. This is where the Insta360 just blows everything else out of the water because obviously you can reframe stuff. So we set the cables up, we uh, popped it in between a couple of trees in a few different locations in my local woods and used the Insta360. It is incredible because you can reframe it after you've taken the shot. So it doesn't matter which way the camera is facing, you're always facing in the right direction. So what I would do is I would load it all into my iPad and I literally sit in my swivel chair and move it around and face the direction of the bike. So I'm guaranteed to not miss a shot. And that is just an incredible way of producing these videos. And it gives you these really, really unique angles that you um, could not get with another camera. So this is a fantastic tool for things like the uh, wire or light, and also just for sticking on the top of a helmet or even you'll see from some of these shots here I just popped it in a backpack and you can just not worry about any angles or even securing it. It was just the two zips done up to the top, it was sticking out the back and I just cycled and I knew that I could get some reframe shots and there's even things that I saw in the reframe shots that I didn't actually see myself being there. So this is an incredible tool to take with you if you want to get a variety of different shots, if you want to get different angles and you want the simplicity of just setting it up, sticking it in a backpack or on the top of a helmet and being able to reframe it afterwards, I would suggest to get one of these. Now, I would not use it in replacement of the GoPro. There's a few reasons for that. Firstly, um, 
it adds to your workflow. So you need an iPad in between. It's really cool for social media and Instagram if you just wanna get quick pictures online. It's, it's super, super quick. But for what I do in editing and put it into Final Cut and then exporting it, it's just an additional step in between. But one of the main reasons is the audio quality. Now, I use a um, little furry wind muffler with the GoPro, and I was just using this to be fair on its own, but the audio quality is not good enough for um, commentary when you're cycling. There's too much wind noise, and uh, it is just a lot of it's unusable. Take a listen to this. You just can't use some of that footage. Uh, a wind muffler might make a difference, but also the microphone on it doesn't sound like it's getting the same kind of tones as the GoPro microphone. And the audio from the GoPro should be pretty good. So, to summarise, this is a fantastic tool. I love using it. I'm going to use it all the time and I'm going to use it to get a variety of different cool looking shots. I'm gonna use it to um, mix up the camera angles and get some shots that you just are impossible to get with a GoPro. So this is not a GoPro replacement, but it is a fantastic companion to use with a GoPro. So it's a recommended buy from me. Massive thanks to Insta360 uh, for sending me one to test and um, all the links and all that good stuff are down below. Thank you for watching. If you like this content, subscribe below. I bring weekly videos on electric mountain bikes and um, tech and all that good stuff. So if you liked it, let me know with a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down and um, pop your comments down below. I do try and respond to as many as I can, pretty much all of them. Take care, all the best, bye.